Yeah. Hey, what's up my queen bees? It's your girl Amanda the Buzzed Artist. Welcome back to my channel, a place where you can let loose and just have fun with your acrylic paint. Okay. So this week we're gonna step into a time machine and go back throughout the years of how I developed myself as an artist with all my previous artworks that I had when I was a little kid. Like so many freaking sketchbooks. Like who needs this many sketchbooks? <laughs> So I actually took some pictures of the really uh, precious wonder years. So this first one is of my brother, Anthony. I totally nailed it for sure. It looks like he was kind of held over a heat lamp and some of his features started melting. <laughs> this next one, I have a beautiful picture of this girl with bare ears and steak knives for arms. So that's pretty cute. And this next one I think is about me and <laughs> my brother. Beetlejuice kind of look going on with myself. I don't, I don't even know. I don't know if she's got a tear in her eye or if that's just like a beauty mark. One would indicate that I was a very sad child and the other one just a very observant one for beauty standards. Okay, now we're gonna go fast forward in time. When I was, I'm gonna say like maybe second grade at this point. My artwork has significantly improved since my uh, crayon days. And clearly was just working on some colors and textures. No comments. That's a cute little sunset with slug clouds. We had like a stencil and we had to work with crayons to surround with like the different colors of the Statue of Liberty. Clearly has some arm tats. She's a bad bitch. June 8th, 1999, a very nice clavic bone. I don't know if those are boobs, but probably not because that wouldn't make any sense. Uh, my interpretation of fruit in the construction paper format. Okay, now I kind of remember this. It's actually my art teacher. Very badly done Edna Mode from The Incredibles. Looks like I did several pictures of her. Yet again, I have my teacher. She's just, uh, her back turned. Fourth grade creepy Amanda. Drawing people when they're not noticing. <laughs> I'm also fairly certain my art teacher just liked being drawn by third graders. Oh wow, that's, that's very awkward. Pretty sure this was the fourth grade at this point. Leg up on a chair and he was looking in the opposite direction. Clearly very maldeformed. Fast forward a little bit. I think this is like a year later. Boy, this was supposed to be the ghost of Christmas past, I think. My arms are stumpy as hell. I kind of remember making this. I just been freshly moved from Canada. So looks like I have a dog. I have me in like, I don't know, like a blue power suit pajama. I have a beaker because science. Aaron's my brother. Oh, and I, I guess I'm reaching for a dove. Like a fly swatter spaghetti monster, but it's actually a dove. Halo's coming out of it because Holiness. This is Amanda working on her landscape. See a little girl just kind of brooding, picking some flowers. And we got more. Apparently I was obsessed with doing landscapes. And wow, here we go. Here's uh, here's my attempt at doing a, a face. This is a charcoal drawing of a music box. Ooh, okay. So there was a phase where my brother and I, we were obsessed with boy bands and girl bands and making cover arts for them. Destiny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so stupid. Played with silhouettes, I thought that was pretty cool. Like two girls, badly malformed, and has got her hands in her pants for some reason. Clearly 90s grunge group of Destiny. And then I got another drawing of a face. Wildly terrifying, actually. I think this was one of my classmates, and I think she asked me to make a drawing of her, so I did. I know, I'm totally roasting my own pictures, but hey, you know what, if you can't laugh. What are you gonna do? It's me, like, working with fingers and trying to understand how all those work. Another set of fingers, I think they're supposed to be like this. This is a little girl with almost anime-like eyes. Oh, so now we're gonna peek into my little diary. I was reading this the other day, and it's like, just really funny. Hey, diary. Today I had a piano lesson. Tomorrow is a piano recital. I am playing Jingle Bells. I bet there's a lot of kids. I'm the 11th person to play the piano. Very compelling stuff. Here is a picture of a little girl. <laughs> High heel platform flip-flops going on and she's chasing a butterfly. This apparently is a picture of someone walking their dog and this is a very demented picture of my friend that I was sketching. Oh and then obviously in the 90s everything was like girls rule. There's stuff here. Some sort of like Arabian princess. Sailor Moon! You have to have a Sailor Moon drawing when you were a kid, right? I was obsessed with Phantom of the Opera and for some reason I wanted to like see it as an animated feature. I started making character drawings. This one was supposed to be Christine Daae. Started making set pieces. You can see the Phantom. Looks like he's being pulled away by an imaginary cane off stage left. So I got a book for Christmas which was called How to Draw Beauty and the Beast. This was my Belle character. No one fights like Gaston. Ah, and then I started playing with expressions. What do eyes look Look like when they're fearful mouth that's a gape and well she's just shook 
And then I started experimenting with like boys and stuff because girls are so much fun to draw, but I was like, oh, boys are kind of new in terms of my drawing skills. Experimenting with side profiles, playing around with crosshairs, trying to understand where everything kind of went. And then for some reason, I got into drawing John Smith, working even more on noses, eyes, kind of impressed with this one like that's that's really good very prepubescent looking toby Maguire character i finally came up with my character design for raul I, I don't even know what's going on with this guy i think this was supposed to be the beast like when after he transforms from that from that drawing book like, adapted him to whatever this is we got this handsome hunk over here i think i was working on the smile and again working on crosshairs working on facial placements now we're i think we're in sixth and seventh grade at this point this is when i started doing more landscapes picture that we wanted to look at and split it up into quadrants and then draw what you see in each of the quadrants this is going to kind of freak you out <laughs> actually had a doll that looked exactly like this. How I didn't get murdered in my sleep still remains a mystery. <laughs> this is when I really started working on shading for characters. We're gonna continue on with really creepy babies. <laughs> oh, and then I started playing around with markers. Little fairy creature. This mood right here. I, I don't even know how to describe a woman holding what seems to be the world and a head that's coming out of the world's butt. Another iteration of Christine Dye. It's a woman. I guess she's mourning over a sailboat. There are more iterations of Christine Dye, and that's when I started working with colored pencil. What? Mom got me this book about, about how to draw faces, where I really started getting a lot better with proportions and putting people's faces together. I think that's when I started to experiment and figure out like what that looks like and to shade. <laughs> and then there's Frankenstein. Got Raoul de Shangyi, Phantom of the Opera. And I guess apparently this was when I started working on paint. It just looks like someone applied really bad foundation on his face. Started working like on two characters interact with each other. Drawing two characters kissing, uh, whose face kind of goes where is a little difficult. More character work. Well, hello there, Joan Crawford. More character work. Then I started working on hands. I guess I somehow knew about Nathan Fillion at this age. And then I had like this Richard Simmons caricature. I think this is when I started working on caricatures and what makes a caricature a caricature. Phantom. <laughs> now I really was obsessed. Almost unhealthy. Oh man, we're already like almost an hour in. This is nuts. This is more trying to understand colors. And I think I used... Yeah, just colored pencil. It was really quick and I was just doing a quick sketch with markers. It wouldn't be a sketch notebook without some sort of fandom reference in it. I used to do a lot of poster art for, you know, classes and projects. One of my big ones, it actually won like an award for language art week. And this was another project that I did. Ethnicities in uh, different parts of the world. France, Africa, Rome, the Middle East. Ah, my Joan of Arc did a cartoon version of this character. Graphic representation of her being burned at the stake. So now I have my studio art. I had a teacher who was bat shit crazy. We did a lot of fun stuff together. She was great. We got this. So just working with different color values. Yeah, and I was working on different color values. Another shoe, another shoe, another shoe, another shoe. Guess what? More shoes. Negative contours. The, this was my scarf. Pencil drawing of a bag. This is like an outline of my face. It's a second progression, a third progression another kind of iteration. So that was that. Now I gotta show you something that I kind of cringe when I think about it. So as you recall, I loved making comics and I draw and do little cartoons. That all culminated into a graphic novel called Incognito. <laughs> yes, the untold story of a girl named Megan? Katie. About a girl named Katie who moved across the United States to escape a murderer who murdered her family in cold blood and she escaped with her grandmother and where she could live a normal life. Let me actually just show you. How intense is this? I also read a lot of Archie comics when I was a kid. This took me two summers to complete. I would draw in every single panel with a pencil. Then I would take a really like shitty Crayola marker and just draw over everything. I had a lot of fun. Let me see if I can skip ahead. Whoa, yeah, <laughs> I forgot about this part. It's supposed to be like a very big, big meetup at the end with a murderer, kills her grandmother, and she's all like, what the hell, man? Throws him a right punch. She does end up killing him, actually. Damn, good God. <laughs> Coming soon to a toilet near you. Now we are stepping into college. This was just uh, a really fun experiment. <sighs> More shades, and I think I was using pastel, probably. I love these balls. <sighs> huge. We also did figure studies, experimenting with different lines of motion, and we had a model who would change positions every 30 seconds. And I also have something else that I found in my stash. Oh, I remember this. Man. 
on a horse. Boy, oh boy, this was a lot of fun. This was insane to make. Sometimes I astound myself. <laughs> After college, I took a very long sabbatical. My job was kind of soul crushing in the end and I decided I have to get out of it and pursue my, my real talent, which is art. That's kind of like where this channel started was me coming back from my hiatus. I started to really get back into my pop art again. So I started going into doing faces and using acrylics. Of course, my Bride of Frankenstein. I, this is always my favorite. Like I really just love how drama she is. Grim Reaper, <laughs> Bella Lugosi Dracula. And of course you have all the other stuff that I I've done on this channel. I hope this video shows you that I wasn't just born ready to draw perfectly. It took a lot of time and years and years of practice. And I want you to realize that you're never going to improve until you pick up your pencil, pick up your brush, and start to paint. And I'm telling you, the more you practice your art, the better you will get. I'm a testament to that. You saw drawings and pictures of when I was in kindergarten all the way to now, and you can see the progression of my art. So find any opportunity. If you see little pieces of paper, you have five minutes, doodle, draw, observe observe everything you see. Whenever I would see a face, I would recognize patterns, how long the nose would be, how wide the mouth would be. Observe everything around you. You need to believe in yourself because if you don't believe in yourself, no one else will. What's really a shame is wasted talent and I know that you have it. You just need to explore it and to polish it and to let it out, let it shine. Hate comments are always gonna come whether you do it or not. So might as well do it and be true to yourself. All right, everybody. Well, I got a huge mess to clean up. Remember, love yourselves and always have fun with your acrylic paint. See you next time. Bye. And why I have all this is because I was helping my parents clear out their basement. Found just boxes and boxes and boxes of all of my old stuff. Like my mom saves everything. Almost every piece of paper that we have produced as her children and she kind of holds on to it. Jaws of life cannot separate her from our bad drawings when we were little. So we had a lot of material to go through for sure. This is where my love for pop art came. It was right here from Mr. Roy Lichtenstein. Oh, I guess we were playing MASH and my choices were an assassin, a lover, a boatman and a husband. Like what? Anthony and I were like obsessed with this one character who was a, a ballerina instructor. It was a stick figure who had a bun and she always carried around this huge ass sledgehammer. <laughs> This sounds, it sounds so insane now that I'm like repeating this. Anthony and I found it the funniest thing ever when this dance instructor ballerina person would come after her students with a sledgehammer. <laughs> like, what the hell am I even saying right now? I guess that takes a peek into our psychology a little bit, huh?